Well, we have a bit of a different story for you today because while we obviously are a Nintendo news channel, we do like to cover the big stories that happen across the industry, including things that are happening in the hardware space. And today we have a massive rumor, the not the first one, but one of the most detailed rumors coming out about a PlayStation 5 Pro. And, you know, maybe just a reminder that there's probably a PlayStation 5 Slim coming later this year. Now, you might go, what? They're actually going to do a PlayStation 5 Pro? Didn't they just start getting PlayStation 5s readily available post-pandemic? Yeah, yeah, they have. But that isn't slowing Sony down, apparently. So let's get into this news story because all of the details, I, I dug into this while there's other people that are like second and third and fourth source verifying this. The original source of all this stuff comes down to this place called Key to Gaming. And this is their article here, which says PlayStation 5 Pro Project Trinity details and release date. So let's read this here. It says, it's been a month since Xbox chief Phil Spencer revealed in an interview that Microsoft does not have plans for a mid-gen refresh for the Xbox Series X. X slash S. According to Spencer, Xbox hasn't received the feedback that would warrant such a refresh with two SKUs already on the market from the Xbox side, and that feedback isn't all at all surprising. In fact, according to Digital Foundry, the company had said during the Xbox Series S slash X reveal that the Series X is already this generation's Xbox Pro offering, and the company decided to launch it ahead of time. But despite Xbox stance on another console, where does that leave PlayStation? Well, according to my own sources, who asked to remain anonymous because they were unauthorized to speak on such details, because of course they were, a PlayStation 5 Pro is in development and its codename Trinity. If you think the codename has some form of familiarity, you're right. Sony has used the Matrix codenames in the past, with the PlayStation 4 Pro under the codename Neo and PlayStation VR under Morpheus. It's understood that Trinity has been in development since early 2022, with sources citing that although the rumors of a canceled PlayStation 5 Pro project are always, quote unquote, fun to read, Trinity has been the only project in the works for a pro model. Despite dates being tentative, it's understood that demo events for the PlayStation 5 Pro are already ongoing, with the majority of studios receiving development kits by late November 2023. Although the Pro's specs were difficult to pin down, Admittedly, due to my lack of technological prowess, sources have stated that Trinity will have a 30 WGP and an 18,000 MTS memory. As for the console's performance targets, and as to be expected, the PlayStation 5 Pro will be targeting an improved and consistent frame rate per second at 4K, so trying to get to 60 or above, and new performance modes for 8K resolution and accelerated ray tracing. These are all to be expected in a Pro model. Whether or not a PlayStation 5 Pro console is desired enough in the current market remains to be seen, but as of writing, the PlayStation 5 Pro is in development and targeting a November 2024 release date, which is very fascinating because a certain company named Nintendo may also be launching something around that time. Now, maybe Nintendo was planning to launch it earlier, so the launches won't overlap, but it is quite interesting to just note uh, the timing here compared to what Nintendo is doing. Now, Trinity has appeared to be the last bits of major hardware for this generation after reporting on almost everything from the DualSense Edge controller via TryHard Games to Project Q and PlayStation's new wireless earbuds via Gaming Insider. And the next time you hear about PlayStation hardware report for me will likely be on the PlayStation 6, which is currently targeting a 2028 release date. Now... Of course, this is just this author saying, hey, you're not going to see another breaking story for me until PlayStation 6. But that doesn't mean we're not getting other hardware because there's been other reports out there as is going to be mentioned here. So as mentioned on my Twitter account, I currently have no information on the PlayStation 5 slim rumors. But as was reported via Insider Gaming, a new PlayStation 5 with a detachable disk drive is expected to launch later this year. It's understood that this isn't a slim version and is set to completely replace the existing PlayStation 5. Um, and if it's not a slim version, 
I just want to point out, if they're not launching a PlayStation 5 Slim, but instead basically an all-digital with an attachable... Di like, what, what I don't really understand is if they're releasing a PlayStation 5 with um, a detachable or an optional attachment disk drive, what? how is that replacing the standard PS5? Why wouldn't you just get rid of the standard PS5 at 500, keep your all digital at 400, but up the hard drive on the all digital, and then, I don't know, just have it be an optional secondary device? It That's maybe the thing that baffles me the most about these PlayStation 5 Slim slash PlayStation 5 with detachable disk drive thing, is what is the point of replacing the current PS5 with a detachable disk drive version. I mean, clearly it's to push an all digital future. I get that. But if you're forcing the disk drive to be included anyways, I don't know anyone looking to buy a PlayStation 5 with a disk drive that's thinking about detaching that disk drive. I don't I don't get that. Now, you could argue there's multiple PS5 home like in, in one home, right? And that maybe that detachable disk drive can then attach to the PlayStation uh, 5 all digital. So maybe you want to move it between places in the house, I suppose. But then why wouldn't you just release that as an optional accessory? See, to me, I find this to be really baffling if it's not a slim model and it's just basically the all digital. <laughs> like, I... I don't know. It, it, it Something about it just sounds dumb. And if they're replacing the standard PS5 with it, and they're including the disk drive, then why are they... I, I don't get it. I, you guys let me know what you think about that down in the comments below. Because to me, that's the baffling thing. Not that a PlayStation 5 Pro is going to exist. Look, regardless of what Xbox was doing, which Xbox had, had decided you know, coming into this generation, they weren't going to do an Xbox you know, Series XX sort of thing. You know, They weren't going to give us a Pro... Xbox, that doesn't mean PlayStation was ever going to listen because look, PlayStation's at 35, approaching 40 million in sales. Uh, by the end of, you know, by the time they get to the end of next year, they'll be at about 50 million, which for them is, you know, when they sell 100 million plus systems every, that's about the middle of their generation. So them still planning to drop a pro model isn't really surprising because the pro model did work out for them with the PlayStation 4 Pro. I don't know if the market really is desiring a PlayStation 4 Pro model but or a PlayStation 5 Pro model, but they're not going to just get rid of the PlayStation 5 underneath it anyways. So, I, I mean, look, I'll probably pick up a PlayStation 5 Pro just to check it out. I don't... Look, I'm going to be honest. As a PlayStation 5 owner, and, and you, can, you, you, can, you can see it right here, you know... As a PS5 owner, I'm not so sure that I've even had the thought cross my mind that it's not powerful enough. We're, we're kind of just waiting for games. Like I don't, I personally don't feel like the PlayStation 5 has even hit its limits. You know what I mean? Like I, I as an owner, just feel like I'm waiting for something to push the system, and then you're gonna release something even more powerful. I don't know. I mean, look, I'm, I'm used to being in the PC gaming space, and I know all about constant hardware upgrades. So it's cool. It doesn't bother me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, because honestly, look, it's probably happening. And do you think this will have any impact on Nintendo and when they choose to launch their system? Or do you think this doesn't really matter? Nintendo just doesn't care. Heck, if Nintendo was planning to launch in November of 2024, they're still going to launch in November of 2024, because guess what? It's probably another portable slash hybrid device. And yeah, you launch your you you go ahead and launch that thing, and people will talk about the power gap between the two. And Nintendo's just gonna go, "That's cool. Here's 3D Mario. Here's Mario Kart. Here's Zelda. Have a good day." <laughs> Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this stuff down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Robo Jets from Nintendo Prime. If you enjoy little videos like this, I'd appreciate if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out into the am.com uh, slash Nintendo Prime Ten down below. Get your ten percent off your amazing pre-fitted, pre-shrunk. Amazing t-shirts, and I'll catch you in the next video.